name necklace stay like that way come on now I love this name necklace by the way it's perfect anyway hey there guys it's Tina and I'm back and I hope you guys are all doing well and staying safe if you're also back welcome back thank you so much for joining me again but if you're new and maybe you like what you see please consider subscribing we have tons of fun here on the channel talking about makeup and all things beauty and today I have a fun video in store it is a haul video oh my god oh, yeah, yay. here's the thing all right I used to do hauls all the time and now I've kind of fallen back I'm kind of tapering my purchases a little bit I'm trying to manage it right like get it under control but I still pick things up right like I'm still a beauty lover at heart and I'm also getting products sent to me so I figured I could just share all of that in this video for you guys and the great thing about my haul videos is that most of the products I've already tried so it's not like oh my god look at this beautiful thing that I picked up and never touched no these are products that I've had in my collection for a while now I've tried with you guys and get ready with me videos I've tried offline I give you kind of mini reviews along with swatches so if you were interested in any of these products hopefully this video will also be helpful as well as entertaining so let me stop yapping let's go ahead and jump into all the new things that I've added to my collection and I have no idea where to start I feel like we should start out with complexion products no rhyme or reason other than they're sitting in front of me and it's a good place to start so let's talk about it this is one of the newest foundations that I picked up this is the Fenty Beauty Ease Drop Blur Plus Smooth Tint Stick. So this is the newest addition to the Fenty Beauty Ease Drop line. They already have the liquid version, which I know and love. Like this is one of my favorite complexion products, hands down. I travel with it a lot. It's a great squeeze tube bottle. Anyway, love that, right? So when I saw that they released the stick, I was like, all right, I'm intrigued. I don't love foundation sticks, but let's give it a try, right? And I am so happy I did. It's what I'm wearing right now. Oh my god so it's a skin tint it's meant to be lightweight coverage but let me tell you right now it's gonna give you a solid light medium coverage not light light sheer coverage but more of a light medium and I was able to achieve this flawless like flawless finish like look at this mmm mmm flawless finish with just concealer under my eyes a little bit around my mouth and then powder and my skin looks amazing it feels comfortable it feels lightweight it does blur like look at me look at this oh my god this is so good this is so good and I use this in a get ready with me video I will link it over here so you can check it out I have timestamps so you can jump to the part of the video where I use it it blends and applies like butter like you hear that all the time oh it's so buttery no no this is buttery and creamy it just slips and slides it's a silicone based foundation so it has that blurring slipping effect but it doesn't feel heavy at all the shade I picked up is 16 which is the same shade I have in the liquid version and the shades are equivalent so you don't have to worry about your match in case you already have the liquid as well it's just the same shade I love this so much highly recommend highly highly recommend and I think it will be good for all skin types honestly because it doesn't feel dry it's like a natural finish it's not really like a matte finish it's not tight feeling or anything but I feel like it's not dewy or greasy either so anyone with dry skin normal skin oily skin I feel like you would enjoy it alright the next foundation I picked up recently is from girl on I'm gonna butcher this name because it's in French and I can't I can't pronounce it the way it's supposed to be pronounced so it's the Paru skin gold matte foundation here's the spelling on the box and here's the packaging really beautiful this is only available on the girl on site right now but I was intrigued because one of my favorite foundations was from girl on I wore it on my wedding day I'm divorced all right but I was married and I wore it on my wedding day so when Guerlain releases a foundation I'm intrigued right this one is beautifully packaged and it should be because it's pricey as hell 
it is expensive i got the shade 4w i feel like i should be 5w though but i don't see a 5w in the shade range it's a 5n so i opted for 4w you know if it's lighter i can kind of tweak it i don't know either way I tried this out again in another get ready with me video but I mixed it in with the other foundation that I have from them which is the terracotta Le Tint. This one is a little bit deeper than I need and then this one's a little bit too light so they mix beautifully together but this is a matte finish. It is infused with 24 karat gold and white peony. Tell me that isn't bougie. So Guerlain is the brand that's known for their 14 karat gold infused primer. You know that clear primer with the gold flecks in it? That's what they're known for, right? And now they have a foundation with gold in it? Like, color me intrigued, all right? So it says it's no transfer, high perfection, 24 hour wear and care. And I was all about it. I was so intrigued. And it also has SPF, let's see. What's the level of SPF, does it say? It don't even say, but it does have SPF in it. All right, here's the thing. I really like this. The finish is beautiful. I do have to tweak the shade a little bit because I don't have a great shade match. On the back of my hand, it kind of blends in, which is why I wasn't too worried. And then mixing it with the other girl on foundation kind of worked out for me. But it's a beautiful natural matte finish. It looks so good on the skin. It kind of blurs and evens out your skin really well. So I like it. It does have a fragrance though. Would I recommend you go out and get this? No, not necessarily. It's expensive for no reason, but I'm in my bougie era and I felt like getting it, right? And, and I'm gonna prove it to you by showing you the other foundation that I picked up. Either way, I'm happy I picked it up. I was borderline ready to be full of regrets because of the shade match. But now that I mixed it in with the other girl on one, it just worked out beautifully. I loved how it looked. Oh my god, it looks so good on my skin. So, I'm happy with the purchase, but I wouldn't necessarily recommend you run out and get it. Alright, here's, here's the other foundation. Are you ready? <sighs> it's from Chanel, of course. Of course. So, Chanel released their Sublimage... Le Essence de Tint. This is their ultimate radiance generating serum foundation. This is the liquid version of their, hold on, hold on, double chin, don't worry about it. This is the liquid version of the Sublimage Le Tint in the, like, the cream pot form. So, like I said, bougie girl era, I was like, ooh, I want to see what it's about because I do like this foundation a lot. Even though the finish is a little bit more glowy than I'm used to, I just don't know. There's something about a luxury foundation that gets me, and I got got, all right? So <laughs> I grabbed this, and the same shade that I have the cream foundation, which is BD91, great shade match. This might come off a little bit lighter, just a touch. Now, this one I don't like as much as the Girl On one, because the finish, of course, is more on the glowy side. However, I like it enough. So it comes in the Chanel packaging, you know, you know, the signature Chanel, and it's a glass bottle, all right, with a pump, you know the deal, typical Chanel, but this is expensive, so, oh, the girl on was like $93, that's why I'm like, don't even, but the Chanel is even more, the Chanel is like 150 something, and I'm like, for what, and the thing about Chanel is that they force you to get the brush, right? So they have this brush that's included with the purchase, right? So it's not like the foundation itself costs that much, but since you're getting the stupid brush, now it costs that much more, and I could do without the brush. Like, they need an option where you can get the foundation without the brush, because it's the same thing with the stupid this one, the little pot one, the sublimage. It comes with the little brush, which I like the little brush. I'm not even going to pretend that the brush isn't cute, but I don't need it. I have brushes in my collection that I use already, so this is not necessary. But it's a cute little brush, right? Look at it. Oh my god, it has this little conical shape, little point. Cute, cute. I will use it, right? It's not that I'm opposed to using it. I will use it, but like, can I get the foundation at a cheaper cost and you just not include the little brush? It's a cute little brush, but I have other brushes, like I said. But Chanel 
is one of those brands, right? They are all about the luxury. They're selling products to a clientele that doesn't worry about the price point. Seriously, if you're going to purchase Chanel, then you shouldn't be worried about the price. Let's be honest, all right? So they're not concerned about me, all right? They're like, girl, you buy it or you don't buy it. We don't really care. But I went ahead and bought it and I'm going to try it out some more. I don't know how I feel about it. I don't know that it's better than the pot, the cream version, but I'm happy to have it. And I think I need to sit down when it comes to foundations now, because there's absolutely no reason that I picked up this many foundations and I'm not done yet. Yep, I did go ahead and pick up a skin tint from Hourglass. So this is the Veil Hydrating Skin Tint. <sighs> now Hourglass and I don't necessarily always see eye to eye. They have an issue when it comes to their shade ranges, especially with their powders. But then in their foundations, they'll have really deep, rich shades. So it's like, I don't understand the balance. I don't understand what's going on over there. But I was curious about the skin tint. I swatched it in store and I fell in love. So this again, like I said, what was it? The skin tint, right? So I picked up shade 13 and I already tested this out in a get ready with me. I'll link it over here. And I fell in love. I fell in love. This is such a good skin tint. And I love a good skin tint. That's the thing, right? Lightweight coverage. It's not going to be heavy duty. It feels good on the skin. And it just evens out my complexion. It's quick. It's easy. Effortless, right? So this guy, it's beautiful. It has more of a natural matte finish. Even though it says hydrating skin tint, it really isn't glowy or dewy at all. And I love this finish. I really do. I think it's beautiful. It evens out the complexion really well, like I said, and it feels good on the skin. So definitely loving this. No regrets because it looks good. I like it. The other skin tint that I picked up, which I think is my final foundation. Why did I pick so many foundations up? Either way, okay? I picked up the Danessa Myricks Beauty Yummy Skin Serum Skin Tint. Another skin tint, right? So this one here, I did a get ready with me, I think as well with this one, right? So I tried this out on camera with you guys for the first time. This one is beautiful. So it's a great formula. It looks good on the skin, but it is glowy. And if you know anything about Danessa Myricks, if you know anything about the yummy skin line, it's glowy and dewy. There is no getting away from it, all right? It's gonna be glowy. It's very hydrating, but it looks beautiful. It's not as dewy as the other foundation from her that's thicker. This is more lightweight, so it doesn't feel as heavy. What I find with dewy products and like glowy products is that they feel greasy on my skin like instantly. I have oily skin, right? And they instantly feel too heavy. It's like when you apply sunscreen, right? I go for the most lightweight sunscreen I can find because I don't like the feel of sunscreen. I don't like the feel of moisturizer. It's too much. It's too much. It feels like, like a mask, right? This feels a little bit more lightweight and it's pretty and I can powder it, use concealer, get the coverage I want and then finish it the way I want it. But it wouldn't be my go-to between this and the hourglass and the Fenty. You know what? Let's actually do that. Let's rank the complexion products. So number one recommendation would be Fenty. I think this would work for the majority of skin types. I think you can find your shade match. It feels great. Love it. All right. Then I would go with the hourglass. I really like this and it's number two because of the price point, but I love the finish. I love how it looks on my skin. I really like it and it's a great shade match. Then I would probably go with the, what is this one called? Girl On, the Girl On one, right? Love the finish as well. The price point eh, is questionable, but I love the finish of this and it's 24 hour transfer proof, all of that. Sign me up. Then I would go with the Danessa Myricks. As much as I hate the finish of this, I feel like I can control the shine a little bit better than her other foundation. So I'll make it work. And the shade match is really great. Oh, the shade I picked up in this is 11. And then I would go with the Chanel. The Chanel, I feel like, is just way overpriced. I mean, it's cute. It's luxury, okay? The brush, I didn't need that. But if I had to rank all of them, that would be it. So there you have it. Those are all the foundations that I picked up. I do have... A powder though to show you so I picked up this Dior forever cushion powder 
I, I should not be allowed to go in store, all right? Especially into one of the Sephora's that have the higher end luxury makeup lines like Dior and Chanel and Valentino and all of these. I should not be allowed, okay? Because apparently I can't help myself. So I went in store, saw this powder, was intrigued. I'm like, I didn't know Dior over here with a little loose powder. I love Dior and I love the Forever line. I think their foundations are top notch. They're probably my number one foundation, complexion, product brand. Like if I had to recommend any brand for foundation, it would be Dior, right? They have the backstage line that's a little bit more affordable, but this is the official like Dior line, the luxury end of things. And it comes in this little tub with a cushion top, like it's full leather, the Christian Dior logo. It's a whole thing, right? You pop it open, it has a mirror and it has the little lid and there is your powder. Loose powder goes everywhere and this has a little mesh sifter. So it's a little less messy than if you just had the open container, but it's still a little bit messy. But this powder, it has a damp feel to it, but it's meant to mattify, right? And I like it. I do like it. Now, would this replace my other loose powder, the one that I love from one size? No, because the one size one is really mattifying, right? So it really like sets everything in place. But this one, it's cute. It's cute. Now, would I tell you run out and get it? Not necessarily, but I like it. It does blur the skin. It does give a matte finish and it feels really good. So I like it. The shade I picked up is deep, okay? Not a good shade range because if that's deep and it matches me, then where you left everybody else for do? Where you left everybody else for the Madonna? Madonna. You know what? Let's go ahead and talk about another luxury brand. So Westman Atelier, another high-end luxury brand. I told you I'm in my luxury girl era, right? So Westman Atelier released a new shade of their Beauty Butter Powder Bronzer. And I already have the darkest shade that they had before, which was, let's see, Soleil Riche. And this one, I love. It's what I'm wearing right now, actually. I love this shade. It's really subtle. It works on my complexion. It's not going to give you, like, an intense tan. But it will bronze up the skin. Warm it up. It's cute. It's cute. So I've always loved this. And, I mean, the packaging. Lovely. They released this new shade, which is Beau Soleil. So this is a little richer, right? And I was like, all right, let me try it out. Let me try it out because these luxury brands need to step it up when it comes to shades. And I love to see that they're adding deeper shades. Someone mentioned in the video that I used this, they were like, oh, I want a lighter shade. And I'm like, I understand, okay? But your struggle is not the same, all right? Because even though they added this deeper shade, it's still a light shade for dark skin. So everybody relax, all right? But this darker shade it looks like they made a pretty good jump right but this still works for me so I think it will work on skin tones that are a little bit deeper than me it will give a subtle tan a subtle bronze to the skin but it's not gonna be too intense and the formula allows for it to blend out really nicely so I do like this a lot and I'm happy I got it I actually ended up using Sephora points for it so of course I'm happy with that and then I already have the previous shade that I love and the packaging is slightly different. This one's a lighter gold, this one's a richer yellow gold. I wonder if this just tarnished over time and I didn't realize and it was always like this. I don't know. I don't remember. I don't remember. Either way, that's what I got. All right, let's jump into, let's talk about this bronzer. So I got this bronzer from, where did it go? Here it is. It's Juvia's Place. They released their bronze cream bronzers. Bronze cream bronzers. Why would you call it that? Either way, it's from their bronze collection. So they have these bronzers. And I was intrigued. I was interested. I love a good cream bronzer. If it's Juvia's Place, I love a more affordable brand. So I'm going to try it out. So I picked up two shades. I picked up Amber and Caramel. Again, I did a Get Ready With Me. Link it over here. I don't know how many of these videos I can link. In that video, I tried both of the shades and this one I was a little bit wary of, the amber shade, because it looks a little bit red in the pan. 
and I was like, oh, this is gonna be too red on me. I don't like a rosy bronzer. And since then, I've been using it nonstop. It, I made a little bit of a dent, but not too much. The thing about it is, once I have all my complexion products on, so blush, you know, powder, everything, it kind of merges with my skin really well. And I really love how it looks. It's a very subtle bronzer. Even though the shade looks too rich, it blends out really easily. It's more like a silicone formula. It glides on the skin and blends out so easily, so effortlessly. So if you were interested in these, I say try it out. Probably get a shade deeper than you think. So this one, I wouldn't have thought this would have been the shade for me, right? I thought the caramel shade would be my shade match, right? Like that looks like it would be my shade match. Nope, it kind of melts into my skin like a foundation rather than a bronzer. So go up in shade depth. And I'm happy with this. I'm really happy with it. I'm probably gonna return the caramel because it just doesn't, it doesn't do anything on my skin. It literally doesn't and it's not gonna get used. And I'm not one of those people that is afraid of returning a product, okay? If I'm not gonna use it, I'm returning it. Y'all figure it out. Y'all multi-million dollar companies figure it out. Y'all figure out the return policy. But for me, I'ma put my money back in my pocket, child. Let's talk about some more cream bronzers. So I picked these up from Tarte. So these are their Man Eater Silk Stick Bronzers. They're stick bronzers. I picked up, did I pick up three shades or, yeah, three shades. Ooh, why'd I do that? <laughs> Maybe I got a discount? I don't know, but I picked up three shades. I picked up After Dark, Nightfall, and Midnight. Probably because I wasn't sure what shade would match me. And the After Dark shade is a little bit more of a light caramel. And the Silk Stick that they mention, is that what, am I saying that right? Silk stick, yeah. That can be a little bit of a tongue twister. You might not be sure what you're supposed to be saying, but these are actually nice. They apply well, they blend out easily. It does have a silky formula. Let me see the top ingredient in this one. Silica, it, ooh, okay. I don't know what isodectyl isono nano eight, <laughs> these chemical names are hilarious but silica I thought it would have a lot of dimethicone but it doesn't seem to there's avocado oil in it and some butters okay I like these these actually apply really well blend out really nicely again I feel like they keep improving cream products every time they do a new launch I feel like the formulas are improving the technology is getting better and better so these formulations blend really easily with the skin they're seamless they're not as heavy and they look good and they can also work with powder products on top of them without being cakey and that's exactly what these are now would I say you need all three shades no you don't no you don't absolutely not honestly I don't know what shades I should have picked up because I can use all three shades nightfall being the richest shade I could probably have done without this one but I wanted to see what it was all about and you can see it blends really well even though it looks too rich it blends out nicely right it's a good color I like all three of the shades and I like the application method so it's a stick you twist it why is it squeaking mm -mm. twist it up you get a nice amount of product how much do you get 0.24 ounce oh that doesn't sound like a lot but you don't need a lot of it right it's not the same as like a stick foundation where you need a decent amount I like these I like these a lot now what I don't like is the blush stick so I picked up the blush version so this again is a silk still silk silk <laughs> see what I mean silk stick blush in the shade pink just plain old pink this sucks I did not like this and this is one of their richer shades like look at that nothing it looks like a pastel shade on me now if you have lighter complexion you might like this but for me it's just it doesn't do much of anything there's a little color like it's a little color but it's not a lot and I feel like I just need I just need more color again the stick option is cute it works out well and the formula is nice and blendable and silky so you may like it, I don't like it because the shades don't work. But the bronzers, I mess with. I do mess with those. All right, let me just cover what else is in 
like this bag and then we'll get into the other products because since I yeah just work with me work with me so these lip glosses I'm wearing on right now these are from Juvia's place these are their do they say what they are oh the coffee shop lip glosses picked up four sh five five shades actually oh my god so cute so these are again from their coffee shop collection they smell like coffee they smell like a coffee candy these are glorious they are a contour formula they're not thick and sticky right they look so good they have decent pigmentation but it's not like an opaque liquid lipstick right it's a gloss at the end of the day and they're shiny and beautiful and I've fallen in love these are excellent you can get these at Ulta which is where I picked them up and they have like multiple shades I picked up coffee break which is the lightest shade macchiato is like a medium caramel shade brown sugar is like a taupey brown salted caramel is another one of those coffee caramel shades it's a little bit richer has a warmer undertone and then chocolate drip is the deepest one that I'm wearing right now it's a beautiful coffee color and you can layer them so if I put the coffee break shade at the I'm not gonna do it right now but I can put this at the center of my lip and give a little ombre you know that little look that's so popular right now yeah it's definitely like a latte lip I love it I love these so much and all the shades that I picked up I'm really excited about even though some of them look similar they have that little bit of a shift a little bit of a nuance that makes them unique listen I know if you <laughs> it's always a makeup girly that's gonna tell you oh there's a slight undertone difference in these two identical looking shades well I'm telling you right now there's a slight undertone difference and I love these I love these so so much so definitely oh, oh. Whew, don't fall everywhere child relax all right let's go through the other products all right that I haven't done separate videos for just yet. oh god grab that with my foot so this is from Huda Beauty. This is a new mascara. I would show you that I'm wearing it right now. I am, but I did a get ready with me video where I tried it out. However, I'm wearing lashes, so it doesn't really count. But this is nice. I didn't expect to love this, but I wanted to try it out because I haven't tried out a Huda Beauty mascara before. And this says it's a one coat wow. So it says 98% saw instant curl and lifted lashes, 96% saw instant length, and then 96% saw dramatic volume. And I'm all about the volume, right? So I was like, all right, let me try this out. And it says it's very black. It has a concave side and a convex side to the brush. So one side looks like a little bit of a paddle shape. Let me show you, because I don't think I did an up close of this. So here is the tube, it's pink, it's pretty. So it has a concave side, so you have sides that kind of cave in, right? And then the convex is where it shoots out at the side. So you see it's like a paddle side. So you layer up your lashes, right? And then you can use it to separate. I love it, I love it, I really love this. I didn't expect a lot. And then again, I don't have struggle lashes, so most mascaras look good on my lashes. Not all, not all, I'll be honest with you, not all, but this one looks really good. So I really, really love that as well. All right, let me let me see what else I got to show you guys, and you'll see me in a second. Got him! So let's do palettes, all right? So I picked up a few palettes and got sent quite a few palettes. So let's just start from the top. I did end up grabbing the Dark Matter palette from Melt Cosmetics. This is a regret. I did not need this palette. I really didn't. Here's the problem though. I went in store and swatched it again. Idiot, okay? I am just a victim of my own mess, okay? I swatched this in store. And when I swatched the shimmer shade, they were so creamy that I wanted it. I wanted it. Instantly, these two shades at the center got me. They got me. These bronzes, they felt so good and so silky. And I was like, oh my god, that's going to make such a good smoky brown eye. And I'm like, yeah, I get it. Stupid. Stupid. Because I can probably get this from other palettes. So why did I get this? I don't know. I feel dumb. Because I don't like the palettes from Melt Cosmetics that are like this. In this format, where they have the circular pans, I like the rectangular pans. You know that layout? 
that's what I love. So I had no reason to get this. I'll show you the swatches. It's the most basic, stupid ass looking palette. It has a black in there that I don't care about. So why, why? I have no reason or rationale and I still don't know why I didn't return it because it's stupid. It really was stupid. I'm wearing it right now actually, uh, just some of the matte shades. It, it, it performs, okay? Their mattes were always beautiful. I love the Melt Cosmetics formula. Some people don't. I'm one of them that do. So, I like it, but it's not, it wasn't a necessity. Like, at the price point too, I think I ended up getting it off the Melt Cosmetics. Wait, yeah, that's what I did. Swatch it in store, went online at the Melt Cosmetics website. They were having like a 30% off sale, so that's when I picked it up. So, and I got free shipping because they included free shipping. Usually, Melt Cosmetics doesn't do free shipping, so you end up paying like $8 additional for the shipping, so it doesn't really work out with the discount. But this time around, it was free shipping, so... So I got it on sale, but still, it was stupid. I did not need this. This is That was a stupid purchase. I'm sorry about it, but here we are, all right? Then I was sent these palettes from Sydney Grace. They did their Christmas in July sale. I already did swatches of these. I did a short, so I'll just run through them really quickly. They released these new neutral palettes, and I really like them, so I want to share them in this video as well. So they have the Love's Journey palette. I think these are now on back order, probably pre-order or something. So this is a neutral palette, right? But it has three different rows of neutrals. The first row has warmer lean-in tones, but they're not orange, right? They just have more of an orange base to them, so they lean a little warmer. So you can get a full look from that row. They have three mattes, two shimmers. Beautiful. Inner tear duct highlight all over the lid. Build up dimension. Great. And the other row, these are more neutral leaning. So they're on the olivey side, a little bit gray-based. Again, three mattes, two shimmers, inner tear duct, all the things, right? Build dimension. Nice. Beautiful. Then you have the bottom row which has more mauve undertones. They're still neutral leaning, but this one has like a little plummy, a little purpley hint to it, but they're on the gray side as well. Muted, beautiful, have a black right here. These work so well together. Now I will say with some of these um, eyeshadows, when you build them up, they can get a little bit patchy. So just be mindful of it. But the palette, gorgeous, love it so much. And they have two options. So they have the light versus the deep. And the light option has shades that are going to be slightly better for lighter skin tones because the transition shades are slightly lighter. And then the deep version will have shades for deeper skin tones. Not saying that you can't mix and match or grab whichever one suits your fancy. Like, it doesn't matter. To me, the shades work well either way. It just depends on what you use for your transition. I love both and I'm glad I have both. Then we have the Heaven on Earth palette. Let me tell you. This, fantastic. Another neutral type of palette, but it has blue shades in it. Or, yeah, blue shades. So... We have three rows again, beautiful. We have the top row, which is more bronzy tones, lean more on the warm side. The middle row has olivey shades, so like your green, lean, and neutral. Still not on the neutral side, but more green undertones. And then we have the bottom row, which are more smoky neutrals, but we have these two blues. So one is a matte, like, mm, what would you call that? Like, uh, it's kind of like an ocean blue, but not really. It's not really vivid. It's more muted. And then you have this muted, almost like a grayish teal. Does that make sense? So even though it's like a blue shade, oh my God, what's going on? They're more subdued and more neutral. So if you were someone who loves neutral shades, you wanted to veer into a little bit of color then this might be a palette for you because we have the olivey green browns and then more of subdued blues. And I think this is stunning. Again, we have a black shade. I think this color story was well done. Sydney Grace does a lot of neutral palettes. So if you're a neutral lover, then definitely head over there. And while you're at it, maybe grab my Tropicolor palette because it's probably their only colorful option. And it has beautiful neutral shades as well that you don't realize, but we have browns and bronzes in here as well as deepening shades. And then you have fun pops of color. I think that's great. They also included this Raspberry Kiss palette, another neutral palette. Now this palette is more on the cranberry side. So it's a little bit neutral, like it's still more muted shades, but they're gonna be on the cranberry red side, more berry shades. 
their pinky tones. If this is your jam, then this is a cute little palette. And I like that this is more of a condensed color story. So it's not just all over the place, red, 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 red. It's just, hey, you want some berry tones, some cranberries? This is a great little nine pan palette. And I think again, they're restocking these palettes. I might be wrong, but I think they are. I somehow feel they are. Then they also released brow palettes. Now we haven't seen brow palettes released in forever. So this was an interesting little launch from them. These are the Mad For You brows. We have the dark browns, right? This is more for blonde hair and like lighter colored hair. I don't know that that many people are into brow palettes anymore. I may be wrong, but I just don't see the market for it. Then they have the black, which would be the darker, richer shades. This will work great if you have like a makeup kit or a makeup palette, or you just change your brows up enough that would warrant you getting a brow kit. I feel like people use pencils and pomades a lot more than powders nowadays, but I may be wrong, but they do have these available in case you were interested. All right, I think that's all the eyeshadow palettes that I picked up that I wanna share right now. All right, so the rest of the products I have, most of them are from About Face. So someone left a comment asking me to review the About Face fluid eye paints. These are liquid eye paints. About Face is from Halsey, is it Halsey? I don't know, I don't know. One of those celebrities released this brand, right? And they're more on the affordable side, but they're still like on the pricier side in the drugstore. But these are kind of one of the key like signature products. So I was like, all right, let me try them out. Let's see, what can it hurt? So I picked up some neutral shades, right? I picked up, I think, cloned and capulets. And I used them in a Get Ready With Me video again, all right? really fell in love like fell in love so i went and pretty much bought every damn shade that they have i swear to you i swear to god i have all the shades i have the pastel shades i have the colorful shades i have the rich shades i have the white i have the black i'm gonna show you the swatches like it's a whole to do because it's a whole line of shades and so far i've only used the neutral ones because they're so good i love them but they have like this rich olivey like army green that I am so excited to try, right? And they blend out really well on the eyes. And I feel like these would make great eyeshadow bases. They work well with powder shadows. They work well as like one and done. And I feel like I wanna use like this smoky blue, this navy blue light. Come on, stunning. They have like a lime green this one is vertigo flowers girl you're giving me vertigo looking at this mess so it's like lime green they have a yellow they have a mustard they have a pink they have red like come on and all the shades that i've used so far i've enjoyed like used in eye looks because they have this cream to powder formula it dries down really well but it blends easily and effortlessly and it gives you time to work. So I'm in love. I don't know what else to say other than I'm in love and I'm gonna just keep using them. And you know, it's gonna take me where it takes me because I got so many of them. All right, I think that's enough. You've seen the swatches, beautiful, right? Oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. I think the only one that I see some trouble potentially with is the blue one which is, what is it called? This one is No Queen Blues because it seems to be more on the sheer side. So it's a little bit patchy. It doesn't really give opaque color. So that's the only one I'm worried about. Other than that, all the others work really well. And like I said, you can use them as eyeshadow bases or as like all over colors. All right, because I like those so much, I decided to try out their lip products. So they have liquid lipsticks they're in like similar packaging but the tubes are transparent while the eye paints are opaque right so see the difference i picked up two of the neutral shades i picked up <sighs> child grunge guru and slumber i love these so much so they're like a real matte lipstick they feel drier on the lips they dry down but they're not tight and uncomfortable they just feel like a powder dry matte lipstick right and 
they look beautiful i love these two shades so much it's like such a perfect nude lip like the combination the ombre that i was able to create so beautiful i don't know that i'll pick any other shades up unless they have well this is the dark brown but unless they have like a really rich rich dark brown like i'm not into liquid matte lipsticks that much anymore so i'm not like intrigued to go try something else out but i really like these too and then they have this lip pencil that i tried out which is uh, cradled yeah this is a nudie lip pencil it matches my lip color almost exactly so i really like this as well it's a really comfortable creamy formula it is opaque it's beautiful so i do like these so far and then i also picked up a blush from them so the only blush color that i saw that really looked like it would work for me is raunchy so this is their rng blush the other shades i wasn't really inspired by didn't care but this one was cute so i decided to grab this and i'm happy i did this is like a cream to powder formula again and i'm feeling like whoever is working on the formulation for these they're doing a really good job because the formulas are pretty like right they're easy to work with they have the cream to powder formula down pat it's so good so really liking what i've tried from about face so far um i don't know what else like i could do as far as a video goes for these you're just gonna see them pop up in get ready with me videos when i do my eye looks and i use them as uh, an eyeshadow base all right let's talk about these lip products from lisa eldred so lisa eldred released the velveteen liquid lip colors these are matte liquid lipsticks and she has like a full lipstick line right she has like a whole shebang of different formulas some are ultra matte some are more sheer they're beautiful all right absolutely love them i have so many of the shades i love them and lisa pays attention to her formulation she's been a working professional makeup artist for so long that she understands formulas and she's worked with other brands to develop their formulations as well so for her to invest her time and energy into her brand you know she's gonna come out with some fire right so when she says she was releasing liquid lipsticks i'm like all right let me let me see what's going on one let me see, Auntie Lisa, what are we doing? So I picked up a few of the shades. I can't find all of them right now. I don't know where I put them. I'm gonna have to like do a whole reorganization after this video and put some of these things away. But I picked up some neutral shades, some red shades, and like, you know, the signature shades from Lisa Eldridge. So I picked up Fawn, which is probably the lightest nude that I have. It's okay i don't love this shade on me it's like a pinky nude here's the thing i don't like the applicator on these all right it's a doe foot applicator but it's very small and it's stiff so you can get precision from it of course but it's so stiff that it feels a little tickly and when i was applying this in a get ready with me video we're gonna know the get ready with me video i wanted to die it tickled so much i hated applying it i didn't like the applicator at all it just felt uncomfortable I didn't love it right but then I was going through and trying the different shades and I fell in love with a couple of the colors and I was like oh yes oh yes definitely love this it's lightweight right but you get opacity from the deeper shades so the one that I picked up this one is jazz this is the one that I fell in love with it's a rich shade full opacity and what Lisa explained is that she wanted the formulation to work for like that blotted lip look so it can just look like a light stain on your lips all the way up to like full opacity. But I feel like the full opacity is only really from the richer shades because the lighter shades, they're just sheer. They're not going to give you that much opacity no matter what. And I didn't love like a fair I picked up. I didn't love that color. I didn't love Fawn, but I fell in love with Jazz and also with Ribbon, which is her signature red. So it's here or there for these. And they don't feel as comfortable as I expected because she touted these as being really comfortable. The formula, she worked on it so long. It's not tight and drying. And girl, them dry. Them dry and them tight and they feel like KVD liquid lipsticks. So they're not that comfortable. They're not a cushy formula at all. Which, I guess, I mean, it's up to you whether or not you like that. I don't love it. I don't 
love it. I do love the shades though. So I'll tolerate the formulation for jazz especially and even ribbon. Ribbon is like this true bright vivid red. Oh my god, it's stunning. But I'm not in love. I'm in love with her other lipstick formulations and even her pencils and her glosses are good. But this is not my favorite formula from her so far. I like the ones I have but I'm not like itching to go get more. You know what I mean? Like if new shades come out, I don't care. That's where I'm at with them. So yeah, those are my two cents for those. And then I have some skincare products, but I feel like I don't want to get into those. I'll just use them in get ready with me videos and just mention them. Like if I use the face wash or the scrub, I'll just mention the line that way. Let me know if that works for you guys or you want me to talk about like all the skincare that I've been getting because it's been quite a lot, but I find like skincare is a little bit boring. So I prefer to like mention them, like I said, in get ready with me videos. All right, because it's like moisturizers, exfoliating face, face washes and face washes things like that um I'll just use them in videos all right let's talk about the last thing because I think this is it and then I can tidy up so I just bit the bullet and got this give by Gwen Stefani check my glow multi-dimensional illuminating highlighter in the shade carrot country I bit the bullet all right I kept going back and forth to this stupid highlighter I'm not a highlighter person which is why I was like why am I getting that stupid highlighter but every time I went in store I would swatch it because it's so pretty okay and it's like a marbly like a mosaic tile highlighter so there are different blocks of shades you can mix them all together you can concentrate on one side but overall, when you mix these shades all together, they give you kind of like a rose gold or like a bronzy gold, which is really stunning. Yeah, it's like a rose gold, right? But it's not sparkly or glittery or too shimmery. It's just like a stunning color on the skin and also a stunning formula. So I can use it as a highlight, but it's not too intense. So that's why I kept going back and I'm like, you know what? Just do it, just stop, just get it because you keep going back. It's one of those things. You know when you have a product that keeps calling your name and as much as you want to avoid getting it, it you just keep swatching it. That's how I felt about this. So I finally got it. So there you have it. Those are all the products. Oh my God, I thought I would never get through this video. I've been putting it off for so long because I've had so many products in my collection, but I've done like swatches and I've done get ready with me videos. So I feel like I've showcased enough of these products that I don't feel like you guys are necessarily missing out on anything, but I wanted to do this video to get everything in the video. So we can go from there. I can finally pack them away and return a couple of the things that I don't like. Oh, oh, let me mention one that I'm returning. Oh, here we go. This thing. This is from Dr. Dennis Gross. It's the 3D Visible Plump and Repair Lip Treatment. You know, when you take fast, I saw this, I was intrigued. I was like, ooh, a lip plumper from Dr. Dennis Gross. It's also a treatment, so it makes your lips like hydrated and plump because it has like skincare ingredients, right? It has hyaluronic acid and then like squalene. So it's like a skincare product, right? And I was like, yeah, let's try this. So I picked it up, I tried it, and I tried it on camera again with you guys, right? So it does plump, it stings, and it just didn't do enough for me, right? I saw a little plumping effect, but if anything, it made my lip line red. So it looked like it irritated my lips more than anything, right? And I have other plumping treatments, like plumping lip glosses from like Lawless, even Makeup by Mario. Those lip glosses are a little bit plumping. So I have those treatments that make my lips look juicy and plump and hydrated, but they don't look irritated. And I feel like that's the drawback for this. It can look like your lips got bee stung. And I don't like that. And it stings, it's not comfortable. I feel like, yeah, I'm not gonna use this enough to keep it, so I'm going to return it. This is my other return. So I'll return this and then the Juvia's Place um, bronzer that doesn't really look that great. 
Yeah, but that's it. That's it. That's it right now. All right, there we have it. That That's everything. I will go ahead and list all the products down below in the description box along with links on where you can pick them up. Those links will be affiliate links, which means I will get a small sales commission if you make a purchase through any of those links. It's a great way to show you support for the channel because it doesn't change the sale price, but I get a kickback that I can then put right back into the content. So I appreciate you guys using my link. If you're shopping online, feel free, use the link, show your support for the channel that way and I also again wanted to thank the members thank you so much for your support and I did get quite a few super thanks these last couple of videos so thank you guys so much for your continued support of the channel I truly appreciate it and until my next video which will be very soon I'll talk to you bye guys